Ken's work in life is nothing less than a search to the annuals of images, and within the images, one's heart bursts open. What I'm basically doing is trying to gather pieces of images that made my heart burst open, package them up into packages, and deliver them to people to see if their heart will burst open. My inspiration was basically the cosmic timeline and how amazing it is that we are even here um, when you take into consideration all the variables that could have happened or could not have happened. The ones that happened got us to this point. When I was walking down the street in Fremont and I, I look over and I see this stone from my hometown so I go up to the sculptor at the time, John Hoagie, and I, I start asking him about the stone, and, it comes, and I told him it comes from my hometown. And we had this conversation, and it lasted about an hour and a half. And he said, well, I have a project coming up, and I'm going to need some help. Would you mind working on it for, I think, around six to nine months? I had prior experience being a, a mason and building gardens and uh, uh, building Japanese gardens as well. He took that ability and taught me how to basically work this stone. I was uh, laid off again. Julie Spidell called Jolly Miller. She asked if he knew anybody who worked with columnar basalt. And, and um, I worked for her two consecutive times. At that point in time, I got the bug, and there was no way I was going to not do it. So I decided it was too laborious of work to not do it for myself. So tool by tool, save by save, working off and on with Jolly Miller, uh, or Simrock now, I managed to save enough money to produce my first piece, which I sold in four hours after I was done. I want the process to be pure, not tainted by um, money I got from a board from somewhere, or me owing money and needing to make money and designing for the, for the sale. Um, I want to be pure of that, and part of being pure of that is basically financing your own work, not on loans, but on saving money, building these on strict budgets, and being minimalistic with your tools and stuff. So that sacrifice of that, of having the comfortable life, so to speak, or going on vacation all the time, or to wherever you want or whatever. My vacation is I get to work in my studio, and it's a total joy. It's not work if you really love it. <laughs> it's just not. I'm not really wired in a sense that I can do a job just to do a job so I can go on vacation. I'm wired in a sense that I want to work to the point where my work is not work, and then I want to do it all the time. I never started out wanting to be an artist. In the construction field, I always got told, it's not an art project, Tony. Just get it done. I didn't know when I first started picking up all these books on cosmology why I was doing it, other than it was a general interest. Over time, it just kept folding in, to, in, in on itself. All the, the books I was reading kept folding in on themselves and, and creating this, this body of information that I was going to dip into and, and utilize. What I did is I borrowed sculptural standards, which is a Minotaur, a Madonna. The reason why I chose to explore the Big Bang vis-a-vis -vis Madonna as the vehicle, or the notion of the Big Bang, is that that's the ultimate birth. Without that birth, there's no other births. Nobody. Nothing. It's the king birth, queen birth. The whole notion that if the Big Bang is your mother, you're related to everybody and everything and all existence. And that's, that's a be beautiful way to think, I think. What I did with this piece is I, I took the various textures and ideas and notions from, from the Big Bang that, one, that the void, that the Big Bang birthed out of a void. So the three major points of Madonna, the face, the heart, and the womb, all are voids. And then after the, big, after the initial Big Bang, it was just gas. And after that gas cooled, it was just dark. And after that dark cooled even more, it coalesced into proto-galaxies. And after those proto-galaxies 
basically burnt, ignited themselves, blew themselves to pieces, rebirthed all the way into what we know as a, our type of sun or our type of galaxy, we get earth and crust. So from the center of this piece out in all directions, it goes through that, through textures, the story, the birth of the universe. And I can consider no better way to say it to a massive amounts of people who may understand than a Madonna. It's a very quick word. People know what Madonna is when you say Madonna. Unless it's 1982, then it's Madonna, Madonna. Okay. And the reason why you know I put a bendy is because it was a homage to the ancient, to the Vedics of India, 2500 BC. Said Sunyata, the void is infinitely full. It took modern physicists up to 25, 30 years ago to say that all existence birthed from a void. So this. This homage to these people who found it through heart, knowledge through their heart, and is homage to these people who found it through their heads. What the space in between the rocks, like I've learned from Japanese gardens, the space in between the rocks is the art, not the rock. The rock is just a speed bump to get you to pay attention. It's the space between them, the, the proportions that tell the story. The reason why I chose the Menantar to work through basically a sun cycle from birth to death um, is because the Menantar had to die. It tells a story about killing the beast inside of yourself and to become an enlightened man or woman. And, and a star also has to die in order for the alpha stacking to, to create the latter parts of the periodic table, carbon aft. And, and without a star dying, your calcium, your silica, your carbon, everything in you would not be here. And without that death, we wouldn't be birthed here. And that's a beautiful thing. The stone I used for the head, I got it off my uh, family's farm when my pops was about my age. Um, he broke um, a thousand acres of the worst land you've ever seen. Um, <laughs> and he had a dream of owning his own farm. I used to help him pick the rocks out of the field for a dollar an hour. And this is one of the rocks that was picked out of that field. There's something very poetic about the dirty outer crust and then how inside you can bring out this, this beauty. The child, the prodigy of these two, which is the ending part of the cosmic timeline, is our galaxy. I chose to use water in that because it's a very earthen thing and water is, a, is something that you know we spend our first nine months in and it's a very soothing thing. I chose to also to use the water to tell a story using the Coriolis effect to draw an analogy to a supermassive black hole in the center of our galaxy which is theorized. When it is polished it does look like stellar. It gives a sense of space or the stars or the night sky. Someone asked me one time what do I what am I really doing? I said, off the cuff, I said, I'm, I'm building speed bumps for people's lives. If you have the patience to slow down enough, whether it's this stuff that I make or Yosemite, and listen to everything around them, just, re, just basically bringing the five senses like a garden is supposed to do is to revamp the five senses. And if you have all five senses working, your sixth has a better chance of kicking in. And that's the one that makes your life easier. You don't fight everything. You go with what is. And you're able to, when you're able to communicate to others, you're able to listen. I mean, my b biggest skill is I listen. It has nothing to do with intellect. As a person, I want to make things better. I try to give to everyone what it's done to me. It's made me a better person. It's made me happier. You know, I want to bring these ideas that that, that make me a happy person and I want to give them to other people and um, sometimes people don't have the time to even listen so you have to build elaborate elaborate things for them to stop long enough to listen so that's why I build these is, is because I could just say these things to people and it, it people are too busy they go in one ear out the other but to build these things people stop long enough to to listen mm -hmm.